Hangman hits the pop-up powerbomb on Yuta, BTE trigger, and buckshot lariat as Hangman pins Wheeler Yuta to get the victory. And when I saw 9.56 p.m., I was like, oh boy, there's a lot coming our way. And there was. Claudio and Moxley come in for the attack, and then Eddie Kingston, the man who quit AEW, he's back. He comes out and attacks Claudio and then hits an Urican to both Yuta and Castagnoli, turns around, and he goes face-to-face with John Moxley, and we don't know where things are going to go. So Matt Jackson attacks Moxley. Kingston is trying to stop Matt. Everyone's arguing, and then Takeshita comes out to booze and nails Kingston from behind. Then Kenny Omega makes his entrance. He storms to the ring, going after Takeshita, landing a V-trigger and a Snapdragon. The crowd is still chanting for Eddie as he goes for... uh, he goes to continue his attack on Takeshita when all of a sudden Will Ospreay enters the ring and lays out Omega, hitting him with the Stormbreaker. And you've got Danielson applauding Osprey. Don Callis is out applauding him, even though he was called a no good Canadian by Will last week. And then Excalibur, who's just uh, going a million words a second, casually mentions Will Ospreay is going to wrestle on Rampage. Dude, so much happened oh, in these God. last four minutes. I don't know if anything has happened in this span of four minutes oh, to end an AEW broadcast before, but I my head was twirling like a basketball. It it really had the feel of like um, all in or all out, I should say, from uh, 2021, where it's just like one big surprise after another. And it just built to this incredible climax, each surprise topping the next. You know, like having Eddie Kingston show up after all this time, I think is very significant. You know, he's always, always, always going to elicit a major crowd reaction. And no matter how big the star power is in the ring, Eddie Kingston will sway the crowd. And this crowd was was appropriately chanting for Eddie. But then you have the Kenny, you have Takeshi, you have Kenny coming. Then you have Takeshi to run it. And then Will Ospreay at the end of it all topping it off. Um, the match was outstanding, first of all. We're not even talk, talking about the match. You know, you had the elite finally like be able to beat the BCC and they did it using a similar style, not, not in like sort of, you know, that, that various like submission based, like technical brutal striking style, but in terms of pace, like you saw very much like a BCC level of like intensity, but you know, applied to the elite and, 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 and hangman pages own like high flying offense. And, um, a rare loss for the BCC, an incredible match um, here. And then just leading right into this incredible crescendo, again, building one entrance off of the other, seemingly um, obviously building, of course, to a whole lot for Forbidden Door. Um, but also, I wonder if you are setting the pieces in place here for what might ultimately be a, a form of a blood and guts match. Um does Eddie Kingston now take up one of those spots in the elite, you know, to join them against the BCC? I think that's where you're left is which side would Kingston be? Like he has reasons to, he has reasons to be with the BCC with Moxley. He also has reasons to oppose the BCC with Claudio. Yeah. I don't see him like turning heel and joining the BCC. So, you know, like we were of course taught expecting like somebody like a, a, a Kota Bushi. Kenny Omega has said that he's uh, asked, uh, you know, he's, he's been looking for friends from the, the U S to join or sorry, from Japan to join him. We don't know who that is yet. Uh, no, he but, said uh, he was going to another country and they said it's not uh, Canada. So what, what country was Eddie Kingston hiding in? Maybe uh, he went to uh <laughs> maybe he went for a European tour. <laughs> Well, listen, um, we also did have Brian Danielson at the end of here clapping, um, and, uh, you know, for Will Ospreay in support of his beatdown of Kenny Omega. So I could very much see, you know, either the Wednesday before Forbidden Door or even the Saturday before Forbidden Door. I think Door. Saturday. Tag team match, Omega and Okada versus Brian and Ospreay, which is already like a holy shit match in and of itself. That's how you that's how you clear 2000 tickets in Toronto. Oh, the night oh my God. Like just the the amount of pieces that they have to work with. I mean. And you have like, you know, everybody coming back for, for a collision as well. You have CM Punk coming back. It's just like this show made me so excited about the next few months of AEW. There's months of stuff in just oh. this scene in the last 10 minutes of Dynamite that you have so many different pieces uh, to go with. Like, it seems like everyone's healthy. It's like there are a lot of pieces to work with here. And uh, like to me, it's like the glue of this whole thing is or at least the hope is like. Does CM Punk bring all of this together and present this like cohesive vision of where these shows can go? And does he like 
sort of is he that nucleus that really drives the, this yeah. this business forward and can bring um a larger audience to, to, to this show on Saturday night but man it's you have a lot at your disposal and you don't have like that that big setback of someone like breaking their foot or uh, uh, just an untimely injury that screws up all these plans. It seems like, man, mm-hmm. you've got pretty much the full deck here, it, right down to your like Miro's and Andrade's and everyone coming back. You got two full decks, not just, you know, you've AEW's, got the new Japan, Japan. Uh, yeah. at, at your disposal. And all of this is like your real peak is August 27th, like at all in like your biggest Mm -hmm. show in the company's history. So it was a, I thought this was an outstanding edition of dynamite. I just, I love that MJF Adam Cole match, but you had the eight man, you had the, the, the trios match at the end of the night. um, And all these, uh, the setup for forbidden door. I mean, compare this to last year where everyone was like dogging on the forbidden door buildup. And Mm -hmm. I think that the punk injury sent like that to me was the first time I saw like, to me, the, the booking was a mess after that. I think trying to put all those pieces together and granted a lot of people just remember that it turned out to be a great show and did very good business forbidden door, but those weeks leading up to it, I mean, it was very criticized. And this year it's been a very simple buildup. It's like the, the matches sell themselves. We don't need a dozen angles to build up like outside of like Danielson and Okada at most, we're going to get like some stare down over this next week, but that's about all you need for Danielson. You don't and need Okada. anything else. You don't need anything more no. with o- Omega and Osprey. Like it was helpful tonight, but if they had gone in cold, I I don't think it's um, well. The first ball. match was it build enough on its own. The fact that the first match is, you know still exists as a lot of people's number one contender for um, match of the year at this point, I think is is more than enough. I you know like part of me was. Um, like Will Osprey came in here and without any sort of like AEW television in months, elicited a main eventers type of reaction. So I think it's it's more than enough to tell you anybody watching AEW sees this guy as a top level guy, you know, somebody who can headline a pay per view justifiably and somebody that you would pay to see to go up against Kenny Omega. Um, I'm just so excited for this show. I'm so excited for like, you know, even like what, what AEW has in store for on its own uh, outside of it. So we're in for a, a, hopefully a few really solid weeks, if not months of programming. It's that time of the show where we tell you about the Post Wrestling Cafe, the best place to drop your $6 every month for bonus content. It's a busy week this week. We've got the double shot with our Dark Side of the Ring review. We've got Rewind Away on Thursday, Rewind a Smackdown on Friday, and on Saturday, a brand new show. It's the launch of our new weekly AEW Collision Review with two hosts that will be joining me. Go to postwrestlingcafe.com and video.postwrestling.com to subscribe.